Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk about weather and ski conditions here. And all eyes on the big storm coming in off the uh, the west coast now. Onshore in California, it produced some nice snows in the Sierra. Let's jump into the uh, the radar and satellite. And everything that you see up here out ahead of this is kind of pre-storm type of uh, snowfall. Kind of ragged as it moves into Colorado there. You can see that'll add a couple of inches in the in the high country of Colorado. Also, snow up into the uh, the Wasatch, so we'll add some accumulation there ahead of the storm. But really, the low is sitting back. Let me show you what this looks like. I'll widen the perspective out here on the radar and satellite, so you can see the spin that is basically. Let's see if we can track this thing sitting just about right there. Um, on on shore now in California. So the eventual track of this low will be very important. As I've been saying, and you might have heard, the southern track of this will be critical to determining who gets most of the snow. It should take that track and become an Albuquerque low or Panhandle hook storm by the time we get into this weekend. And any deviation in that track, the snowfall amounts, especially in Colorado, will be very sensitive to that track. And if there's any deviation, that will change the corresponding snow amounts or where the belt of highest accumulation set up. So part of this has to do with the jet stream. Without this, you know, the storm system really wouldn't have uh, much of a life cycle to it. But let's take a look. So you can see the dip off of the west coast right now. That will take the storm and begin to usher it in. Look at the movement. So look at the dip in the jets, the horseshoe sort of pattern right here. Let me just mark this um, if I can. So the area of low pressure is going, let me take the arrow off of this, it's going to be just about right here if I were to mark it. So it's basically sitting at about by Sunday. It's coming, it's beginning to make that turn and that hook pattern into Colorado during the day on Sunday. And then um, the jet would begin to usher it away during the day on Monday. Now, this is where uh, the rubber meets the road. A lot of snow would be falling at this point across Colorado, and um, it could, certainly could slow down with this type of pattern, and some of the snow may actually last into Monday as well across parts of northern Colorado and even parts of the Front Range uh, with this type of setup. So, future radar. All right, so that's our current state of affairs. Let's move it into... Uh, Thursday night and uh, Friday morning. So the low will come out of the desert southwest and notice the snow in Colorado on Friday. It'll be off and on, a couple of inches of accumulation up in the mountains, but that's all minor compared to the storm system. So that's Friday morning. Here's Saturday morning. The low at this point will be coming out of Arizona and making its way towards Albuquerque. So it's going to make that move and then that will put it in the position which will set up Saturday night and also Sunday across uh, Colorado. So at this point, you can see the snow brushing the Wasatch, and in particular, the high Uintas look to get a fair amount of snow out of this. And certainly southern Utah, the La Salles will get snow. So this is the view on uh, Saturday at 515. Snow is uh, in action. You've got some heavy belt belts of snow setting up. And really what this is tied to is the low that is sitting over or even close to Albuquerque, and then will eventually, like I said, make that hook pattern up through southeast Colorado and up through the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. That puts the upslope winds, that rotation around the low, to pile in the precip across the front range of Colorado. And for that matter, very I'm watching the foothills and the continental divide of Colorado very carefully for big totals. So basically from Winter Park to Eldora to Longs Peak to Cameron Pass, and then running all the way down that eastern slope of the Front Range in Colorado, it looks like that's where some of the biggest totals are, are going to be in, in feet, in fact. So that's Saturday at 515. All right, so what about Sunday morning? Same kind of thing. You can see the pipeline of moisture basically being thrown back with that upslope component. All those winds are pushing that moisture back and slamming it up against the high peaks and the foothills of Colorado, squeezing out all that moisture. And it does look like, and I'll show you this on the accumulation, there's going to be some spillover. So while most of the accumulation in Colorado will be on the Continental Divide and east, some of it will spill over into Summit County, Grand County, 
and then down into the Sawatch even possibly as the storm hooks out from the eastern plains and goes north. So that's Sunday at 515. Now at this point the low is moving away. By Monday morning the low is already out into the corn and the corn belt and into the Great Plains but it's such a large storm that you're seeing the wraparound effect back into Colorado and this would be you know not main accumulating snowfall from the main storm but wraparound residual type of snow accumulation but it would continue nonetheless at this point it looks like into Monday morning so as far as accumulation goes so let's just run this into tomorrow morning uh, we'll add some in Utah you can see some of the accumulation in Utah the numbers coming up right there then we'll add some more into Saturday morning notice we're, we're pushing between 6 and 12 inches there across Alta Snowbird, Park City, uh, Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon. So 6 to 12 on the way by Saturday morning there. Brian Hill will get more. Kings Peak, La Salle's uh, will get more. In Colorado, we're just starting. This is all just light until we get into Saturday night and into Sunday morning. This is by Sunday night. These would be somewhat grand totals, if you will, in Colorado. So let's break this down. You've got big totals running right on the Continental Divide in Colorado and then spilling down across the eastern slopes of Colorado. I mean, I'm forecasting feet of snow in some of these areas. Uh, it's entirely possible that from Loveland to Winter Park to Eldora to Longs Peak to some of these towns like Estes Park to even uh, places like Cameron Pass, we're looking at two, three, four, five, six feet of snow by the time this storm is said and done, that eastern side of the Continental Divide. Now, it's possible, like I was saying, some of this spills over into Summit County, uh, maybe even into Eagle County as well, towards Vail Pass, the Gore Range. I don't really see much falling in Steamboat 8 to 16, probably in that area, because I think you're just a little bit too far away from the event with downsloping winds to some degree. Um, but there will be some spillover, um, nonetheless, uh, down into, like I was saying, like Breck and, and, and Vail and and, and Keystone and a lot of those areas and even as the storm kind of hooks up going up the, um, the you know the panhandles and up through southeast Colorado you're going to find some of the wraparound snow on that curvature that on the return trip is going to affect places like the the West Elks, Aspen Snowmass, even as far down as uh, Leadville and, and Buena Vista and Slida in Colorado so this is a pretty good storm, and some of the outer bands may very well brush up against King's Peak. You can see the number there at 28 inches. That's going to be big. What's the, the uncertainty there is do some of those bands from King's stop right there in the high Uintas, or do they continue back towards the Little Cottonwood area and continue to tick up that total? That's entirely possible. I could be too conservative here with the numbers in the Wasatch. They could be higher if those outer bands continue to affect the, the Wasatch into Monday. So that's also something to keep in mind. But nonetheless, this is going to be the biggest storm of the year for parts of Colorado. Not all of Colorado, but parts of Colorado. And yes, it does depend on the track of the storm. Any little shift to 50 miles will affect these totals. So we'll do another update tomorrow. But that's it for now. appreciate you tuning in here. Have a good day.